Now, if you switch to Starlink, chances are you're stuck with the router from your old provider. In this video, I'll show you some of the ways you can use your old router to extend your Starlink Wi-Fi network. So let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Bakosi. We take care of home. More on this later. Basically, there are three ways you can use your old router. In bypass mode, as an access point, and as a Wi-Fi repeater. So I'll explain these in brief. Bypass mode is a feature that comes with your Starlink router. Essentially, it assigns all Wi-Fi related matters to your, in this case, old router. And it will remain with all local area network or ethernet related matters. This option is ideal if you have a router that is more advanced than the Starlink router. If your old router does not have advanced features like Wi-Fi 6, then I wouldn't recommend you to enable bypass mode. Now to deactivate bypass mode, you need to reset your Starlink router and you also need to set up your Starlink Wi-Fi again. You can also use your old router as an access point. Now this is almost similar to bypass mode, but in this instance, your old Wi-Fi router as well as your Starlink router will still be able to broadcast a Wi-Fi signal. This is ideal in a scenario where you need Wi-Fi access, say on two different floors, at home or at work. It involves connecting the Starlink router to the old router via an ethernet cable and broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal with a different name. The advantage of this is that speeds are not affected in any way. Lastly, you can also use your old router as a Wi-Fi repeater or Wi-Fi extender. As the name suggests, you will be able to extend your Starlink Wi-Fi signal. This is particularly useful if you have a big yard or have areas where your Wi-Fi signal is weak. So you strategically position your old router to repeat the signal to those areas. The disadvantage of this method is that speeds are slightly affected. And now that we are up to scratch, let me show you how you can use your old router in bypass mode. You need to grab your old router and plug it in to power. Then you need to reset it in order to delete old settings. On this D-Link M960 router, to reset it, you need to locate this reset button. You should press and hold until the reset light turns off. The router will reboot with fresh settings. Once resetted, you need to access the router's admin dashboard. Details on how you can do this are normally located at the back of the router or on the box or user manuals. First, I need to connect to the default Wi-Fi of my router. In my case, it is the one written D-Link M960 5G. The password is at the back of the router. Then I need to open a browser and type 192.168.0.1. After this, I'll be required to log in. On many routers, the default username and password is admin, admin. You can check on the router's box for your router's username and password. Once logged in, I need to follow the setup wizard. By clicking next, in my case, I choose the bridge slash AP option. And in the mode drop down, I leave the AP option on and click next. AP is short for access point. On the LAN interface setup, I need to leave it as it is and click on next. On the admin setup, I'll leave it as it is you can always change this later, so I'll click Next. On the Wi-Fi setup or setup wireless, I need to change the Wi-Fi name. In my case, my router is Joe Band, which means it supports both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. So I will name my Wi-Fi Starlink Bridge 1 and copy that and paste it into the 5 GHz SSID and name it Starlink Bridge 2. I'll leave the passwords as they are for this video, but you can always change these later. Then I'll click finished. The router must restart at this point. Once the router restarts successfully, I'll go to my Wi-Fi list then to see if my new Wi-Fi names are showing. In my case, Starlink Bridge 1 and Starlink Bridge 2 are showing. I'll use my password to connect and it is connected, but with no internet. At this stage, I'll take my ethernet cable and connect it to the Starlink router and connect the other end to one of the ports on my D-Link router. Then I'll need to open the Starlink app and go to settings and scroll down to the bottom and click on bypass mode. Then 
enable bypass mode by dragging this toggle to the right. Then Starlink will restart in bypass mode. The Starlink Gen 3 LED light will change from white to violet at this point to show that bypass mode has been activated. When you go to the Wi-Fi list on your computer, you should no longer be able to see your Starlink Wi-Fi. But your old router's Wi-Fi must appear. In my case, Starlink Bridge 1 and 2 are visible. And once I connect to them, I should be able to browse the internet. Now, before we talk about setting up an access point, we also need to talk about this video sponsor. So guys, let's talk about this video sponsor, Bakosi. Bakosi is the premium grocery shopping app which is available on Google Play Store and Apple's App Store. Let's be honest, shopping these days is an extreme sport. With the number of counterfeit products on the market, is your family safe? Luckily, this is where Bakosi comes in. With thousands of products sourced directly from the manufacturers, you can be guaranteed good health and peace of mind. With Bakosi, you can buy groceries for your loved ones from anywhere in the world at an affordable price. Payment methods include Visa, Mastercard, Inbox, and EcoCash. Groceries are delivered within 24 hours. You can pick and choose individual items, and if you don't have time, you can get pre-packed hampers starting from $40. You can also enjoy more perks discounts by getting the Bakosi membership cards. If you order your groceries from Bakosi before the 20th of January 2025, Stand a chance to win a Starlink kit. So what are you waiting for? Download the Bakosi app today and get shopping. Link to the Bakosi website in the description. Now setting up an access point is almost similar to bypass mode. You need to follow the same process of setting up bypass mode. You need to reset your router, log in to the router's default Wi-Fi, use the wizard to set up your Wi-Fi. On operation mode, you need to choose access point and click on next. On the LAN interface setup, you first need to go to the Starlink app and determine the range of the IP addresses by looking at the IP addresses of the devices connected to the Starlink router. In my case, I will use 192.168.1.57 since it's not getting used by any of the other devices. Also note that this is the new IP address you will be using to access the admin dashboard for your router. Then press next. I'll leave the admin passwords as they are and click next. You can set up your Wi-Fi names as in the previous example and click finish. Then the router will restart. We still have one more step. Once the router restarts, log on to the admin dashboard using your new IP address. In my case, 192.168.1.57. Then we need to go under settings. In my case, under the LAN settings, I need to disable DHCP, which is the system that manages users, to avoid future conflict with the Starlink router. Then click Save. Your router must restart at this point. Make sure that your Ethernet cable is connected to your Starlink router and the old router. Once the router restarts, you should be able to connect to the new access points Wi-Fi. The last method is using your router as a Wi-Fi extender or Wi-Fi repeater. Now, you need to follow the same process. First, reset your router, connect to the default Wi-Fi, run the wizard to configure your router. But this time on operation mode, choose the option repeater in the mode dropdown and click next. On the LAN interface setup, leave it as it is and click next. On the set admin account, I'll leave it as it is and click next. You can go through the process of setting up your Wi-Fi as before and click Next. When you get to the Site Survey page, click on it. Then a list of Wi-Fi networks will be displayed. You will need to choose your Starlink Wi-Fi, which you need to extend. In my case, it's ZTG Starlink Wide. You'll be required to add a passphrase. Use your Starlink's Wi-Fi password. This mode does not need you to connect an Ethernet cable. And that's it, you should be able to connect to your newly extended Wi-Fi network. So those are some of the ways you can use your old router to extend your Starlink Wi-Fi network. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.